Another type of test we can run is the small sample test about the mean mu. Uh, small samples when we have 29 or fewer data points for quantitative data. The requirements for that are a random sample selected from the target population. That's going to be pretty standard. That's what we're going to need for all of these. Uh, second thing is the population has a relative frequency distribution that is approximately normal. So we have to know that the distribution we're pulling from is approximately normal. Now, both T of alpha and T of alpha divided by 2 are based on n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So before we only used T of alpha over 2 and it had n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Now we're going to use alpha because we can have a one-tailed test. Three different possibilities, the same as they are for the large sample test about the mean mu. Two-tailed has doesn't equal half of the alpha goes on each side of the distribution and the critical values are 2. Uh, left tail is specifically when we're testing to see if uh, the mean is less than a given value and all of alpha goes on the left hand side of the distribution and finally the right tail is when we're testing whether or not something is specifically greater than a number. Now the test statistic that we're going to use is the T. It's calculated in the exact same fashion that our Z distribution was. Uh, X bar minus the mean mu over the standard deviation of sigma, which is sigma over square root of n, but we won't have sigma, we'll only have s. So here's an example. We have a random sample of 20 observations from a normal population, and it yielded a sample mean of 45 and a standard deviation of 8. Question, is the population mean less than 50? We're going to let alpha equal 0.05. So the information we have here is n is 20, x bar is 45, and s is equal to 8. And we're testing whether it's less than 50. So the null hypothesis is that the mean equals 50. The alternative is that the mean is less than 50. There's our alpha, and there's all of our summary information, 20 observations, a mean of 45, a standard deviation of 8. Now, we're going to calculate what this value is here. We're just going to fill in the information. Our proposed value is 50. And it's going to be 8 over the square root of 20. So we have negative 5 on top. Let's calculate the denominator. So we have 8 divided by the square root of 20. So our denominator is 1.788. We're going to take negative 5 and divide by that. So negative 2.795, we'll write the whole thing down, it's fine. Negative 2.795. Alright, so there is our test statistic. Now we need a critical value, and I'm going to show you both ways to find that critical value. One is using the, the t-distribution chart, the same thing that we've used before n minus 1 degrees of freedom. In this case, we're going to use the entire alpha 0.05. So we're looking for t. Alpha is 0.05. And we have n minus 1 degrees of freedom, so 19 degrees of freedom. We want it on the left-hand side since we're looking for less than. So that critical value is going to be 0.05 here, 19 down. 1.729, which we're calling negative 1.729. All right, so that value is going to fall uh, right around here, probably. So that value is negative 1.729. That's t of negative t of alpha. Okay, so our critical area is going to be this area here. 
So it's only strictly less than. So there's our rejection region. Rejection region right there. All right, now let's take a look at our test statistic here. This is our test statistic. We're going to compare that with the uh, level of T of alpha and determine if it's in the rejection region. It, it certainly is. Negative 2.79 actually is probably closer to this area here. So there we go. It is in the rejection region, therefore we reject. Now, another way to calculate this critical value here is using the calculator. The TI-84 has this option, the 83 does not. So we're going to use the inverse T, second VARS. Inverse T is number four. We need to give it the level of alpha to the left, which is 0.05. If it was a two-tailed test, we would cut that in half. Comma, the degrees of freedom, which is 20 minus 1, is 19. So we feed this into the calculator, hit enter, and it should give us the same value. Negative 1.729, there we go. So this is how you do testing using a small sample for a mean.